So good morning, hoping everyone is in the right class and if you're not, it's too late to leave now the door has closed. We will probably have a few people come in and out. Uh, we know that's just the way that it is, but we always want to be respectful of the time for those people who are here. As the Lord said, my name is Neil Oates Jr. I'm just a guy named Neil, that's what I always say. Um, but we are here to learn the secrets of a successful open house. And I'll tell you the first secret is that there are no secrets. Okay, there are no secrets to a successful open house, but I'm going to share some best practices. And these aren't only things that I uh, utilize in my business, but these are things that some of the top agents across the country, my coach, uh, who coaches, uh, I think, like the top half percent in the country, she has gone through done a lot of research myself. Uh, you guys will probably hear things that you've heard before. This is not going to be ground, uh, earth shattering or groundbreaking, but it is going to be a reminder for a lot of you. Uh, and the reason we're doing this right now is because on September 15th and 16th, uh, has anyone visited the South Florida Open House Search.com? Has anyone visited this site yet? South Florida Open House Search.com? It is a fantastic public facing website. It's a consumer facing website where every open house that goes into the MLS is on this site from the Miner Association of Realtors. Every open house goes on this site, and it's a very appealing, it is an attractive website. But what's happening is, is everyone here aware of what's happening September 15th and 16th, the largest uh, open house uh, event that South Florida has ever had? Are you guys aware of that? So September 15th and 16th, the Miner Association is putting on a four-county open house event where we're going to have media blasts, we're going to have everything to get you and your sellers and the properties out in front of the public. So that's why we're doing this one today. And as Steve said, he came up, he couldn't wait to go to in Coral Gables, I think two weeks. Yes, the 26th. So he came up, he's gonna get a head, a head start on everyone down in Miami Dade. Because even though we're preparing for open house weekend, these are things that you will be able to implement immediately today if you're doing an open house this weekend. So that, that's what I want you guys to see. Before we get started, I always take this opportunity. Do we have any, any veterans in the room? Any military vets? Okay, so the reason I ask that is I believe that next to, I believe that we're in one of the greatest industries in the world next to educating our children and protecting our country. And it is because of the veterans that we have an opportunity, that I have an opportunity to do something I love. So if you guys see a veteran, know a veteran, make sure that you uh, tell them thank you every chance you get uh, because we don't take that stuff lightly. Do we have any family members of active military? Raise your hand high. Well, no, uh, active, I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, right. family, family members of any military personnel? Family members of any military personnel? Yes? Okay, yeah, yeah. so we want to give, can we give her a round of applause, please? <laughs> and the reason I want to do that is because my dad was a Navy man. What I learned is that when one person serves, the entire family serves. Because every time, you never know what's happening. You, you, there's always something in your heart. Every time they go out, every time they deploy, a piece of your heart goes with them. So we do not take that stuff lightly. Now, let's find out who, these are the objectives. So we want to determine why agents do open houses, and understand what constitutes a successful open house event, decide where to promote. I'll tell you right now, the answer is everywhere. So where to best promote the event, and then create a plan of how to execute a successful open house. Let's find out who we have in the room right now. How many agents have been in the industry, in the business for less than a year? Anyone been in less than a year? Okay, how long now? Um, eight months. Eight months? Something like that. Eight months. Okay, so our congratulations and condolences to both of you. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I, the people who are laughing, you know, the people who've been in the industry, like, yeah, yeah, good job. Welcome, welcome to the beast. So, congratulations and condolences. Congratulations, because I believe this is the greatest industry in the world. Now, I believe that under all is the land. I believe that nothing happens until a sale is made, much like Brian Tracy and all of them say. But then I believe that what we do, you know, really changes and, and impacts generations to come. And hopefully you all understand the weight of that because I also believe that it's insultingly easy to get in the business and with for the amount of responsibility that we have. All right, so who's been in the business for more than a year and up to five years? Between one and five years? Okay, who's been in between six and 10? Six and 10 and more than 10 years in the industry? 
All right, you two ladies, you just became my co-presenters, just so you know that. All right, you're like, well, you can sign up for this. So you two ladies, are right, like, is it too late? No. So, so you two are going to be my co-presenters, but this is going to be a collaborative effort. This is going to be a conversation, a dialogue. We will take a break just before we get to the good stuff, um, which is right now. Okay? Yeah, I know it's corny, but you know, I, I'm, I'm standing up, so it's okay. Um, so we will take a break about halfway through, so you guys, if you can hold your calls or do anything like that, wait until the break, we'll probably have maybe between a five and seven minute break, and then we'll come right back in. So I just want, as I said, this is going to be representative of this entire room right here. Some of us, some of us in here are going to be like the young lady right here. This young lady, she's very attentive, she raises her hand confidently when we ask, when she uh, hears a question, so that's going to be some of you. Some of you are going to be like my man right here, who's like, I'm raising, should I, am, am I supposed to raise my hand? Yes, good, yes. And hopefully, none of you will be like my man right here, who's sleeping in an upright position. He's like, okay, is it over yet? Where is the coffee? All right, but that's what we have now. Who in here is currently doing open houses? Who's currently doing, even if they suck, I mean, you can raise your hand, even if they suck, like, okay, I'm doing an open house, but I don't know. I raise your hands high if you're doing an open house. All right, look around. Right, like this. All right, look around. Yeah, I'm like, who's like, currently doing open houses? Because those of you who are currently doing open houses, I'm going to ask that you be vulnerable in here today. I'm going to ask because this is, I, I forgot to give a disclaimer. You guys have heard there's no such thing as a stupid question. There are stupid questions, <laughs> but stupid questions in a safe space is a stupid okay. question in a safe space. That's what it is. All right. So if there's any questions you have, please raise your hand and ask. If you have uh, questions or comments as we're going, I'm going to ask you guys to stop as we're going and interject so that this is interactive. Is that fair? Will everyone do that for me? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, who has either heard me before or this is your first time hearing me raise your hand? Did you guys get that? Yes. Okay. If the person did not raise their hand next to you, you might want to move. Because people who don't raise their hands are the ones that I think get called on all the time during the presentation. So why do, like, that's funny, right? You guys like, so why do agents do open houses? Why do agents do open houses? Yes, sir. Generate more leads. Generate more leads. To get the house sold. To get the house sold. Find the buyer. Find the buyer. To see the neighborhood people also, to check on the neighborhood, who are these people around, what they're looking for, because people from the neighborhood would gather and come to see what's inside the house. You okay. Know, curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. Get other sellers. Get other, <laughs> sellers. Get other, sellers. <laughs> other sellers. Anything else? Free lunch. Okay. Free lunch. So, so why, why do we do open houses? Like that's, I know that's why we go to open houses. That's why we go to open houses. It's also exposure to get our exposure. Get us out there. Let me tell you guys the reason why, the number one reason why agents do open houses. Because they don't know what else to do to get the home sold. That, that's the truth. Agents do open houses because they don't know what else to do in the marketing to get a home sold. Now the answers that you guys told us are the reason why we should be doing it. Yes, we want to do, but the majority of agents are doing open houses because in their listing presentation, their marketing consultation, whatever it is, the first thing, the only way they communicated value to the seller was I'll do an open house. You guys, have, do you guys know agents? Do you guys have a friend that does that? I'm not gonna ask if you guys do. You guys know a friend that's doing an open house every weekend, hasn't sold the place, hasn't done a price reduction, getting no traffic, but will sit there for four hours every weekend and think they're being productive, right? That's the plight of the average agent. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Well, I don't know. I was gonna say that one of the reasons we do open houses is because our broker tell us to. But um, and and that that's fair. That's a fair that's, answer. Yeah, for you that's, to say. I mean, it's something that's suggested when you started it wherever you go that's one thing that you might want to do for your home to advertise okay so as she said that's one thing that you're told okay this is one thing that you want to do to advertise the home a lot of times you get that from the broker and i'll tell you why that is me being a broker is because that's the easiest thing that is a tangible thing that we can show sellers that we're doing something to market their property even if we're doing a piss poor effort, a piss poor job of doing executing, that's something that we can show the seller. Why? Because we want the seller to leave. They're out of ideas. That's why they do open houses. We put it in the MLS. We took the one photo that's required by the Miami Association <laughs> MLS and put it in the in there. We posted it on. I'm sorry. I think now the requirements. 
No, what just one? That's just one. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. it's just one. Yeah. You know, and unfortunately, a lot of times the house isn't even, the picture isn't even of the house. Right. You know? yeah. But that, that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. That's another conversation. <laughs> so they're out of ideas. Who here has ever had a listing, or who here has had a friend? who's had a listing, did everything they could to get the property sold and it just would not sell. I'm talking about even doing price reductions, you know, staging the home, whatever it is, and just had not had, had it sold. You guys have friends like that, right? And we were hearing that the inventory is low, everything's selling quick. That's not always the case. Sometimes you're just out of ideas and homes are not selling. The number one, so one, two, three, four, the number one reason why we do open houses is what I believe. Now, would you guys think that the number one reason we um, do open houses is to sell the listing, get buyers, uh, get more sellers, get leads, exposure? All of them. All of them. All of them. Okay. Which one do you guys think is the most important? To sell the house. house. Yeah. To, get the house to get the house sold. Who would agree with that? Everybody. Okay, now this is interactive, so I'm going to ask, so there's usually three questions. Who agrees, who disagrees, and who's afraid to raise your hand? Okay, so someone, you have to raise your hand at one of them. So who agrees that the number one purpose of doing an open house is to sell the property? Okay. You say no. What, your name, ma'am? Robin. Robin. Robin, what, is, what do you think the number one reason for doing an open house would be? You don't think it's to sell the property. What are you saying is number one? To get buyers. To get buyers. To get buyers. Because sometimes you don't sell that place. You don't know. You just sell something else somewhere else. No, but that has nothing to do with it. I think that has nothing to do with it. I just know that when I go put many, many sites, or in the past when I did many more, when I had houses to sell, the other problem. Um, so I put all these signs and you know there's people driving around all the time. There's people all the time, especially like in surfs like where I am, because they want to be in that neighborhood. And they'll see that one house sign and I would get a, you know quite a lot of people coming to see it. Numbers, N A R. In 2016, they tracked the result of open houses. Now, these are the results that were reported by agents doing open houses. Less than 5% of the time did the sale of the property result yeah. from a buyer coming to that open house. So less than 5% of the time did the buyer who came to an open house buy that property, okay? Now, our goal is to sell the, to sell the property. Now, I'm just gonna just go ahead and give you guys the answer. The truth is we do open houses to make more money, whatever that looks like. And that was sort of a trick question because if you get more buyer leads, is that, is that making more money? Yes, yes, yes. The only reason we do open houses, and this is what I want you guys to transform your thinking about, everything we do in this industry, business-wise, is for this reason right here. More green. That's it. Right? And so I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. I'm going to give you guys a couple of answers. I'm going to give you an answer as a broker. I'll give you an answer as an agent. I'll give you an answer as an instructor. And they're totally different. I'll give you an answer as a home buyer and a home seller because I've been both, all right? And so that's what I want you guys to think about when you are doing open houses, what are we trying to accomplish? Because we're going to try to accomplish one thing as a listing agent for the seller, but then we're going to try to accomplish something else because we're going in and we want those buyer leads, right? Well, ultimately, the answer is to make more money, period. If you are not in this industry to make money, I dare to say, and I am controversial when I say this, if you're not in this industry to make money, you're a liar. Right, would you guys agree? Yes. Yeah. Because if not, I have a great foundation, a charitable foundation, I would love for you to come and volunteer <laughs> at my foundation and I wouldn't have to pay you. And that's why we do the open house. So what is a successful open house? Can you guys tell me what a successful open house is? Yes, sir. Properties under contract. Properties under contract. Successful open house. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. You get a lead that you can convert into a buyer or seller. A lead that you can convert into a buyer or seller. What would you guys constitute a successful open house? Interactive part. Okay, so now it, everyone here has been through grade school, right? I'm hoping. At least I'm not saying high school, college. They've been through grade school. So you guys know that when you do like this to the teacher and you look away, what happens? You get called on. 
My mom is a principal. She's been a principal for almost 20 years. So I've learned a lot. I'm gonna do the same thing. So if you see this, you're gonna get called on. Or if you make eye contact right here, just staring at me, I'm gonna call on you just so you can stop looking at me. So what other things constitute a successful open house? Okay. Where you where you reached a big number of people, be it for be it for for all the reasons that we've said. Okay, a big number of people. All right, so here is how we, this is what we constitute as a successful open house. You have a vision, you set a goal, you plan, you execute the action. That's what success is. Now, we're going to go through each one of these in this class so that when you leave here, every one of your open houses, I can guarantee that every one of your open houses will be successful even if no one shows up. Even if no one showed up, who has a friend who's done an open house and no one showed up? <laughs> For four hours, right? You're sitting there, you're like, huh. Yeah. Well, and then if it's, you're hoping that it have, you know, wires fire, to have internet or electricity, something like that. But then think about it. We go to property where the electricity is off and you're sitting in there in July, yeah. right? Four hours and you left the water on in the cooler at home, right? Uh -huh. And you're sitting there, right? You've been there. Do that, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I can guarantee that every open house you hold will be successful, even if not a single person shows up. And I know you think there's no way, but I want you to understand right now that attendance to an open house is not success. Exposure is not success. So what you all know, so what you all will see right now, I have a microphone on my wife. Everyone say, hey wife. Hi, Hi. Hi. My wife Joanna, she's back there taking photos and I have a video going. Why? Because everything that you do in this business, everything you do for your open house, you have to multiply. You have to repurpose. So the recording is going to go on my um, podcast. The video is going to go on my blog. It's also the photos are going to go to Deborah at the Miami Association. So we'll have all this content out of two hours. Does that make sense to you guys? So we want you to do the same thing for your open houses, right? Because the open house is never about the open house. A successful open house is never about the open house. The successful open house is when you've gotten content for the rest of your business, when you uh, have exposure, when you can get in front of sellers, when you can use uh, the photos or the video you take in the preparation for and the execution of when you can put that in your listing presentation for the next seller, right? Who here is doing listing presentations? Who works with sellers? Who works with sellers in here? Okay, so what better way, if, even if no one shows up at an open house, what better way to show your next seller what's in your marketing plan sure. than to show photos? Well, these are some of the open houses that I've done in the past. Now, we know that when we take photos to put in our presentations, we want them to be staged, we want it nice, neat, so we don't even need people for that, right? Okay. So you want to make sure that all of your layout is super, super flashy, super nice, whatever it takes. So if you're going to have your signs, you're going to have balloons, you want to get there plenty of time, have all of that out, take photos. So if you do five open houses, you should have 30 or 40 photos from every open house. Now when you're talking to a seller, when you email them, when you send them on Instagram, whatever you have, you have lots of content. Does that make sense to you? You have a lot of content that you can use uh, going forward. So here it is, the vision, goal, plan, action, and then that equates success. Which way, looking at the screen, which way do I go if I want to take 73 east? <laughs> left? To your left. <coughs> to my left. You've got two options. I have two options if what? You're a truck. Exactly. You're You're a truck. truck. If I'm a truck, I'm going to the one straight. Okay? Yeah. Now, who thinks that, and, and the reason I put this sign up here is <laughs> how long do we have to get people's attention? You have seven seconds. You have seven seconds to get people's attention. If you're driving, do you got and you don't know, you're not using you know Waze or Google Maps or something. If you're driving, do you think you'll get a little bit confused about which way you're supposed oh, yeah. to go? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Oh, absolutely. You guys can take photos, whatever you want. Now, I will tell you that this entire presentation, I'm going to give you guys away at the end, a link. 
where you have everything in the presentation uh, that we have up here. You also have notes and uh, examples of all the material that I'm going to show with you guys, show to you, so that way you guys can have it and you'll take and you'll be able to run with it. Absolutely, take uh, photos now. If you want to get my good side when you take photos of me, it's either side. It's either side. Yes, yeah. yeah, see, I, I, I have self-esteem issues. It's, it's uh, extremely high. It's extremely high. So right here, the reason I show this is this is a this is how a lot of people do their open houses. Right? No plan, no clear direction of where they're going. What's your idea? Tell me what you guys do for an open house. Give me some ideas what you do to put together an open house. Yes, ma'am. Well, um, I, I take this like a radius of about 100 people and I send an email. I send an email, no, uh, a, little, a little card. Okay, so she's doing mailers. What else are we doing for an open house? Yes, ma'am. I door knock and I call and I do a lot of social media. Do not call and social media. I'm going to come back to you because I have a question for you. Yes, yeah, sir. I was going to say social media. Okay. And of course, uh, finding out which agents might have uh, saved searches in that area, blasting out emails to them. Now, how are you? So you bring that up. A lot of people don't know how to do that. What are you using for the well, safe MLS. search? The MLS yeah. and by, by, via reverse, reverse prospecting. Prospect. Yeah. Is everyone here familiar with reverse prospecting? Yeah. yeah. If not, what's your name, sir? Noah. Noah will be giving you a class immediately following this one <laughs> on reverse prospecting. Amazing, amazing tool. Yeah. These are things that a lot of us, we don't know about. We've been in the industry for years. There are so many tools that are available to us that are free. And I don't want you to say they're discounted because we pay our dues and all that. We can never pay for the amount of stuff that the Miami, that the Miami Association gives us in our dues. I don't care how much you pay. Okay, so uh, that's a big deal. So when Noah brought up reverse prospecting, that's a huge deal because then yeah. instead of looking for needles in a haystack, you just go to the haystack. Just go to the agent instead of looking for the consumer directly. Anything else? What else are we doing? I do. I do. For the MLS, you can choose to advertise the brokers and the public. Advertising in the MLS. Even in Zillow. Yeah. Zillow. I do flyers and I do prospecting around. You know, I go personally to. I work Miami area and mm -hmm. um, you know it's easier to go walking there and, and okay. I also I also do the MLS show uh, open houses. And okay. Anything else well, from anyone? I didn't understand exactly the reverse prospecting. Oh. So reverse prospecting in the MLS, and if I have a client who is looking in North Miami, I can allow <coughs> when I put the client in, I can allow reverse prospecting. That means, so he as a listing agent, he can go in and he can find agents, agents, not the clients, he can find the agents who have a search for North Miami if they've allowed reverse prospecting. I'm going to encourage each and every one of you, when you set up a search, allow reverse prospecting because you're helping your client. Most of us don't know what it is, so we don't click the box. We don't check the box. Just to give her an insight, just to give her an insight quick, if you're the listing agent, you, you click on your property mm -hmm. itself, and on the bottom, it, it uh, comes out that you can put mm -hmm. reverse prospecting right. and you get the list right. right. here. Yeah. And you yeah. see all these people one day. So they show okay. us how we're getting to it. I, I don't want to get stuck on reverse all prospecting. Right. No, no, but, but, you. So you got it? I and no, thank you for bringing that up. And that's why we do this, these classes. I want to encourage you, if you can get to a class at a physical location, anywhere in our association, instead of doing things online, the relationships you make, the things that come out of the organic conversations are more valuable than just reading through, clicking, and taking yeah. whatever exam it is just to get the credit uh, for that. Now, when I say, who here has heard, let's put signs out to promote your open house, signs, signs, signs. This is not what we're talking about right here, okay? No. Now, who works the, who works primarily condos? Who works primarily condos? Anyone in here? Who does a, a, a decent amount of condos? Okay, so one of the objections that I get is, Neil, this doesn't work in condo buildings, it doesn't work. Yes, it does. We have very successful agents who implement everything we do here, and they just put a twist on it. So we can't do the signs. Uh, we might not be able to hold an open house, but then we'll do things like private events, exclusive event, exclusive open, right? So there are different ways. And the way you would do that in a condo, and I'll just jump to that part so everyone says, 
I'm not going to get anything out of this because he's talking about open houses for single family homes with signs. The way you do it in a condo is you go to the security guard. When, and you, you know, if you work in condos, it's all about the gatekeepers in life. How far you get is all about the gatekeepers <laughs> and who you take care of. So you take care of that gatekeeper. Hey, Joe, what's going on? Yeah, it's your boy Noah. Good to see you again. How are you doing? How's the wife? How's the kids? I see you all the time because if you have a listing in there, you want to build that relationship. You want to tell Joe, hey, Joe, in about two weeks, I'm going to have a lot of showings scheduled back to back. So there may be one person that shows up. There could be as many as 40. <laughs> what I need from you, Joe, is I need your help to let them get in. But how can I make it easier for you? What instructions do I need to give the buyers when they come? Right? And then you go there a couple times before intentionally. Even if there's no need for you to go to the building between the time that you make the initial, consult, the initial conversation and the open house, you want to go back two or three times when Joe is going to be working to plant that seed and with the water the seed that you planted earlier, I said, Joe, you know what? I'm hoping you're going to be here. If not, you know, I just brought here are some Dunkin' Donut donut holes for you and the guys in the security of booth. Whatever it is, right? Same thing at the front desk. If the bribes still work. Bribes still work. I have a 10 year old son. He bribes me almost every day. <laughs> right? Keep them coming, keep them coming. Bribes still work. Who believes that bribes still work? For those, for those who did not raise their hand, they probably believe where they might be running for public office. That's the only reason. Okay, so this is what we mean when we want to promote open houses via signs. Okay, you want to have, how many signs should you have when you're promoting open houses? How many signs should you have? Easy. How many signs do you want to have? I have three signs always. Maybe it's not enough. Like around the house or in the corners of the yeah. corner? When, when you are promoting an open house, how many signs? Yeah. I need to have five. Well, if it's allowed by the city, too. Yeah. <laughs> five. five. You want to have as many signs as you can to be obnoxious. <laughs> That's the truth. If you're, if no one complains about the number of signs you have, you don't have enough signs. That is the honest truth right there. Young lady here said as many as possible. Well, I said as many as it takes to easily find the property. I want it to, do you guys see these signs right here? Sign, 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 sign. No. <laughs> I want, and, and this is not just me. These, these are the coaches, the, the top producing agents. Who here has seen an agent who has inundated an area with signs and you're like, no, oh, that's, so, that's so pointless. That's so, guess what? They got your attention. Mm -hmm. Because there are people who will never go to an open house, but they will know and recognize the agent. Mm -hmm. If you're a seller, if you're in a community, who works community subdivisions? Who works a lot of community subdivisions? If you're a seller in that community, and if every 10 feet, every 30 yards, whatever it is, you see a sign about an open house, and oh, this is making my neighborhood ugly, oh, that's so disrespectful. Guess who you're going, what you're going to want when your house is for sale? You're going to want a disrespectful, you know, annoying agent who's going to put signs every 10 yards, right? Now, do, does this have an effect on selling the property? Absolutely not. The signs do not have an effect on selling the property because we already know that less than 5% of the time the home sells from as a result of open house. What this does though is it does have an effect on your perception. Uh, so there's always a, a debate. Is perception reality or is perception only perception of reality? All that stuff. The buyer or the consumer's, the public's perception is your reality. If they think that you held kick butt open houses, and if in their mind that makes you a great agent, you can be a great agent. Even if you suck at follow up and everything else. If you have an outstanding open house in the eyes of the buyer or a seller, the consumer, you can be an outstanding agent. Because what we see in the industry, we see the majority of agents put up two or three signs, one on a corner, maybe in the median going down the road and then just at the turns, all right? Now, can I, can I be totally transparent with you guys and tell you what I, do, what I used to do? This industry is a shark tank, right? The industry is a shark tank. 
Now, I, I, the way I explain it to everyone is that we have to be friendly sharks. We can't just go around biting each other, but this is a shark eat shark industry. Now, if you're a guppy, you might want to go to another pond, right? <laughs> so what I would do is I would find the agents or the open house. When I would do an open house, I would be strategic about when I, when I schedule my open house. And if I saw someone who did a fantastic job of putting the open house signs on the main road, and it would usually be an open house sign like this. It doesn't have the brokerage name. It doesn't have anything, the agent's name. It's just open house, and it might have the time right here. One to seven. Who could imagine doing an open house on Saturday from one to seven? You guys saw that? Who saw that? Oh, yeah. I was like, man, are they crazy? Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is probably their fourth or fifth open house, and they're doing this right before the listing expires tomorrow. Right? I'm going to give it one last push. So I would find agents. I would find areas where this would be their open house sign. I would not put any of my open house signs in the major areas. I would poach their traffic. Because what I would do is I would use the beef, once they came off of the main street and they came into the neighborhood, after that, right where the turn goes in, I would use the big A-frame sign or some attractive sign with balloons to really get their attention. Because as long as you get to this street right here, I don't care whose sign you follow, as long as you see my sign, my branding, the company, my info, open house, and it gets you to the property. Okay, and the reason I stress that and the reason I tell you guys that is I want you to think differently. I don't want you to think that just because there's an open sign right here, there's an open house sign right here, that you have to go right next to theirs and put your doors as well. Right? If the arrows are pointing the same direction, I don't care whose sign they follow to get you to the road or to the house. Everyone agree with that? Everyone okay with that? All right, so make sure that you can challenge everything uh, that traditional one up. If I have an open house right here, I need to put mine right next to it and put balloons on it because they're going to come to the one with balloons on it. Right there, it's not going to matter. This is where I said, where do you want to promote your open house? The answer is everywhere. I don't mean go buy a billboard. That is not what I mean. <laughs> Billboards and bus business. Are, they have been shown, and this is not me, don't get upset with me if this is a big part of your marketing plan just in the industry or for open houses, but bus benches and billboards have historically shown that you that we, as professionals, we cannot quantify the business that we get from those marketing activities, okay? We cannot quantify the business that we get from those marketing activities. So just keep that in mind. The reason I use this here is because of the message that says your message has to be here and everywhere. When we promote, we know that we're promoting uh, via the flyers, walking neighborhoods, door knocking, social media. Who is using social media really, really good when it comes to open, to open houses? Okay, so you guys are like, I think I am. So you guys are right now like the kid that was like this. Like, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, right? Okay, so you want to make sure that you have some type of social media presence in your marketing. Who here is not using social media at all? Now, Steve, I'm going to challenge you. And I'm not a fan of social media. I'm not a, a, you know, someone that says don't use it. I just know that we have to be where the people are. And if you use it effectively, if people are spending, we know, who here has kids? Does anyone here have kids? How much time does your kids spend on their phone right here? <laughs> How much, now, okay, and I'm glad you guys said that because now I'm going to hit you where it hurts. How much time do we spend right here? We, we spend so much time here that Instagram made vertical video with IGTV because we got tired of flipping our phone like this and the little stands and now we just hold it right here, right? So we want to be where people are, and people are in their phones. And the only way to effectively and to responsibly be in front of them is to be on social media. They're there anyway, so we need to be there as well. And we're only going to see an increase in that uh, trend. Any questions so far? Any questions, comments, concerns? Social media. As I was saying, right here, what we will see is, well, this isn't social media, this is just a megaphone to the marketplace. This is one of my favorite um, phrases that I use with sellers. I'm going to be your megaphone to the marketplace. This is a research dialogue. If you say megaphone to the marketplace, that is the highest impact uh, phrase when it comes to sellers 
that any of the research has. What, what gets their attention when you say exposure, marketing, all of that? It's like, yeah, everyone gives says promises exposure. Everyone says marketing. But when you say megaphone to the marketplace, this is a visual representation of the word megaphone to the marketplace. All right, so if you don't take anything else, take that. That was free. Everything else is going to cost twice as much. You guys got that twice as much? Okay, maybe not. I tell you, they just get worse. I'm you, as it goes, it just gets worse. So make sure that you're the megaphone to the marketplace, and we're going to talk about how we can do that uh, here in a moment. Well, let me ask you. So I know that we said social media, we said door knocking. Who here is using email blast to their sphere when they do an open house? Why are you guys, why do you do an email? Now, this is to your sphere, people that you know that you write. Okay, your name? Angie. Angie. Angie? Yeah. Okay, so Angie, why do you send an email to your sphere for an open house? Well, mine is two both because I'm a new agent. So one, it's to remind them that I'm in real estate. Two, so that they see activity. And three, everyone has to live someplace. People move eventually, and it's one of the things I do to keep them top of mind. Okay. You haven't learned the bad habits yet. That's great news. We, will, we are reluctant to send, and it's something that Angie said about the exposure, we are reluctant to send open house things or, or emails to our sphere because we're saying, oh, well, they don't live in this area. Now, I'm not inviting them to the open house. I'm just telling them that I'm doing something, that I'm doing activity. Emailing to your sphere, open houses that you do, it is a, it, it's a deliverable where you're giving them permanent and powerful information. And it's not just, here's the recipes for a quiche. Right? It's showing something with business. So I'm going to challenge you guys to make sure that every time you do an open house, and we're going to talk about the plan in a moment, every time you do an open house, you want to make sure that you're sending that out to your sphere. Because people that are in your sphere that you already have a relationship with, they're more prone to, first of all, open the email. And the same thing, they want to see what's going on. They say, oh, I saw you were over here in Deerfield. Right? Or maybe in the email you say, if you know someone who's in looking for a house in Deerfield, I'll be holding uh, this open. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. Is, is everyone here on LinkedIn? LinkedIn is one of the most underutilized social media platforms for us as business professionals uh, in the entire world. LinkedIn is one of the most underutilized platforms. So I'm going to ask that you guys get in, get on LinkedIn. And this is a benefit to you guys because you're going to be getting this weeks and probably months before everyone else. So make sure that you get in and then brand yourself as an industry expert. LinkedIn is a great way to do it and to influence influencers. Who here has a YouTube channel? Does anyone in here have a YouTube channel? Angie. <laughs> what, did you, what did you do before uh, real estate? Sales and marketing. So, <laughs> cheater. Uh, cheater. Okay, so right. you want yeah. to. Right now. <laughs> so you want to have a YouTube channel. Why? Because, because video is everything now. Video is everything. Let me tell you what may happen. Who here remembers Vine? Who, does anyone remember Vine, the app Vine? Vine was a six second video, do it for the Vine. I don't know if you guys have kids right around say, do it for the Vine. No, now they say, do it for the ground. Okay, my wife is laughing. Um, I never did anything for the Vine, just so you guys know. But the reason being, because video platforms, apps, they're going to come and go. YouTube is never going anywhere. Google is never going anywhere. I'm telling you, I'm convinced that between Google and Apple, there's going to be a hostile takeover somewhere in the middle, right? <laughs> So YouTube is never going anywhere, but what can we do as a professional? Why do you need a YouTube channel? Because you're going to be posting all of your open house. Remember I said the video that we're going to take of the open house, of the activity, is going on your YouTube channel and you're going to have a playlist of open house, successful open houses. Now, when you have your marketing plan, when you go to show your seller, your marketing plan, you're gonna have a link to your YouTube channel that's branded to you, and you're going to have everything in your channel only about real estate, and it's going to show your successful open houses. You're gonna to have to do uh, conversations about buyer consultations, listing presentations. This is going to be your video library for everything. I have content from 10 years ago on YouTube right now that gets me a business, that's still generating business from 10 years ago. 
Video never dies. It never dies. All right, so now we are going to, oh, that's perfect timing. We're about to get into the action plan. This is why you guys are here, because this is what's going to constitute a successful open house. We are going to go in, we're going to talk about everything we need to do uh, to make a successful open house. Now, it is 10.45, 10.45. The content that we have is probably going to be an hour, maybe an hour, five or 10 minutes, okay? And then with questions. So do you guys want to take a quick seven minutes right now? Quick seven minutes, yes, everyone's okay with that. Quick seven minutes, be back here, please, at, what time is it? That would be at 10.52, please. 10